Aberrations is the first major exhibition at the Robert McLaughlin Gallery dedicated to highlighting the wonderful range of photo-based work in our collection. Like many public galleries our size, our photography collections have not been given the same attention as other media, and the collecting histories have been relatively short. This exhibition is a celebration of our rich photography holdings and brings to light some never before seen gems from the collection. Divided into four sections, strange secrecy, trick mirror, shifting ground, and ordering the world. These categories act as guideposts to view the works in new ways, inviting new connections and ways of understanding. With the prevalence of photography in everyday life, photographs have a unique ability to shape the way we see and understand the world, holding the capacity for social and cultural awakening. The photographs here represent vastly different time periods and locations, as well as a wide range of scale, color, and material. But each work evinces the deliberate choices of the maker and offer a unique view of the world. The term aberration means something different from the norm or something unexpected. We invite you to lean into these differences, relish in the juxtapositions, and bring fresh eyes to these incredible works. The first section, Strange Secrecy, begins with a work by André Cartes called Circus Budapest from 1920. I love this image, and I think it's the perfect way to open the exhibition. The photograph shows a man and woman peering through a hole in a wooden fence. You can't tell what they're looking at, but only can guess from the title that they're sneaking a glimpse into the circus. There's an obvious joy in looking that comes through in the image, and the pleasure of catching something that you maybe shouldn't be looking at. In his introduction to the Americans, a now famous photo book by Robert Frank, the poet Jack Kerouac describes Frank's work as strange secrecy. It may seem like a contradiction to refer to photographs as secretive, but these works are selective in what they reveal. It is Frank's ability to capture the mundane, everyday ways of living and working that allow him to represent the truth of a place. And it's in this spirit of celebrating these small moments which hold the fullness of humanity that is captured in the works here, including a number of iconic works from Frank's The American Series. Similarly, in this section, the works are delightful in the reflection of the day-to-day. The skeptical gray-haired woman peering out from behind a cedar hedge, waiting for the royal visit in Bowmanville in Alan Dunlop's work, or the glistening bodies in Linda Ward Selby's images of the New Orleans Mardi Gras parade. More than showing us a place, these images convey the feeling of the moment, connecting us to its energy and expression. The second section is titled Trick Mirror. A trick mirror reflects its surroundings in strange and unclear ways. Similarly, photography can either represent the world as it is, or it can distort and bend reality. In optics, an aberration is the failure of light rays to converge at one focal point because of limitations or defects in the lens or mirror, making the image unclear. Here, the photographers have either intentionally manipulated the image or subject to reveal the deliberate choices of the maker. Many of the works focus on the body, showing it distorted for the camera, such as Susie Lake's Impositions Maquette, in which her body is bound with rope, or Bruce Nauman's Study for Holograms, where he pulls his lips into exaggerated expressions. Doubling and mirroring show up in Michael Snow's Untitled from the artist jazz band portfolio and Charles Gagnon Men's Room Union Station Toronto captures the repetition in their environment. The mirroring and distortion in these images further emphasize their subject matter 
and ask the viewer to make sense of what they perceive. The section, Shifting Ground, looks at the physicality of a photograph and how it is created. The ground of an image, like the ground underfoot, helps us to orient ourselves to the world and make sense of our place within it. It helps us feel rooted, like staring at the horizon line to avoid seasickness. In these works, the ground is shifting, opening up new perspectives and ways of seeing, as well as a wider understanding of what a photograph can be. Photo historian Charlotte Cotton has called photography a fabulously broad church to describe the ever-expanding nature of the medium, where in a short time, we've seen the development from analog to digital and beyond. Here, the shifting ground is both literal and figurative. Robin McKenzie's large five-part work, Continuous Digging Piece, documents a process of moving earth to form multicolored circles made from rock and soil. Works by Ian Baxter, Jane Ash Portoise, and Dominique Blaine extend the frame or ground of the image through drawing, painting, and collage. And a number of more abstract works like Barbara Klaus' Heresy Drawing and Thaddeus Helonia's Wall Series disrupt the notion of ground completely, favoring flatness and texture over depth. The last section is called Ordering the World. In an interview with artist Mike Alexier, writer Sheila Hetty describes his practice as, the feeling his work has always given me was about the possibility of precision and perfection as an organizing frame for the vulnerable, untamable human element. Mike Alexier's David Grid is made up of 75 portraits of men named David, age one through 75, shown in a large grid. This categorization is both precise and irrelevant, and the work is a purposely feeble and playful attempt to understand something about humanity. All the work here similarly tries to make sense of the world through order and process, and are linked to methods of documentation and cartography. Bill Vizan's Georgian Bay carefully constructs a singular image of the landscape through calculated movements of the camera, where each negative of the contact sheet forms a part of the whole. Arno Mag series Werner's Nomenclature of Color attempts to catalog the array of tints, tones, and shades of every color seen by the human eye. What can we learn from this kind of cataloging? What slips between the cracks of our knowing? How do we try to make sense of the world and understand our place within it? These are just some of the questions the photographs in this show elicit. Thank you for watching this tour, and I hope you're able to come see these beautiful works in person.